Hello friends! Today I'm going to be taking you through how I made this Victorian ensemble based on a pattern diagram from 1888. If you'd like to know more about what went under this gown, check out my previous video about getting dressed to see all the layers of underwear. I started with the book Directoire Revival Fashions by Francis Grimble, which reproduces Victorian patterns from the years 1888 to 1889. These books come with their own scaling method, so in order to enlarge the patterns, you first need to create your own scale called an apportioning ruler based on the relevant measurement, usually your chest for the bodices and your waist for the skirts. Rather than having measures, these rulers just have numbered divisions which scale up or down according to the size. You can see the difference between my chest measurement ruler and my waist measurement ruler. Once the rulers are in hand and you've identified the costume you would like to make, it's just a case of scaling up the diagram in the book. I found this was pretty easy as scaling goes, and I enjoyed the process. I will say, having completed one of these projects, that the proportions of these patterns are somewhat idealised, but not in the way you might expect if you're more used to modern sewing. While my chest and waist measurements are still not in line with the pattern, when I went on to make up and fit a mock-up, I found it was only slightly too short and too small in the waist. It turns out this may in fact have been wishful thinking, as even after I made the alterations, I think both of these things were still true of the final bodice. Oh well. Once I was happy enough with the pattern, I turned to cutting out the bodice from this orange plaid kimono silk. This kimono was a couple hundred yen from a temple market and one of my all-time favourites for years, but I have no good reason to wear a kimono anymore, so I'm glad to be able to give it a new lease of life, even if I have to do some cutting piecing because of how narrow the fabric width is. The mock-up will mostly serve as the bodice lining, and for the front panel I've decided on a heavy black polyester satin. Despite using a period pattern, the books come with no sewing instructions, and I have no interest in exhaustively researching completely period techniques, so trust the electric sewing machine and making it up as I go along, it is. I put in darts and started the back pleats, the back bodice sections get sewn together to the waist, and back skirts likewise, with the top of the sections that will be pleated left open so I can arrange those as I want. Before I can put the full bodice together, however, I first need to deal with the false jacket lapels. I'm adding in a layer of strong linen left over from another project, and I'm going to attempt the notoriously difficult process of pad stitching. Oh wait, no, that turned out literally perfect. It turns out pad stitching is actually incredibly easy and works really well. Who knew? I turned under the seam allowances of the lapels and covered up my pad stitching with a solid orange silk taken from the lining of the kimono. Then I had a LARP event on Zoom, so I quickly tacked the sleeves in place and yeah, I managed to pop the back seams just sitting in a computer chair for a couple of hours. Let's take those out and do a proper job of it.
I also decided that the black satin front was a little bland, but I had a damaged lace collar applique lying around from a previous project, so I used a mirror to get everything positioned the way I wanted it. I ended up cutting and layering different parts of the lace so it was nice and three-dimensional. The sleeves were a little short on me already, so I made some bias binding to finish the cuffs and not lose any of the length, as well as to edge the black satin collar as I thought this would tie everything together quite nicely. Because of all the bulk and the slippery silk and the fact that I was using the smallest possible seam allowances, I set the sleeves in by hand, something I definitely recommend if you're at all intimidated by sleeves. The train of the bodice was finished with a faced hem, just like on a kimono I ended up using two different lining materials, depending on how visible I thought they would be. Stitches are very visible on this fine silk, so I used the tiniest catch stitches. Not the most historically accurate finish, but it does look flawless from the right side. Then it was time to move on to the skirt, which will be extremely quick and easy in comparison. I only had scraps of the orange silks left, so it was time for the black satin to really shine, pun intended. Because they were both very big and very simple, with the exception of the front drapery, I drafted all the pieces straight onto the fabric with a chalk pen. The front drapery folds back on itself and moves around when I walk, so I used what was left of the solid orange to give it a facing. Because the hem is curved, it gets tiny pleats along the top edge to fit. The instructions on how the front drapery is pleated are not the clearest, by which I mean it's these arrows and nothing else, but I eventually figured out something that, even if it's not exactly what I was supposed to be doing, is very pleasing. The whole hem is faced in a heavyweight cotton, little pleats to fit around the curves again, to give it some body and weight. Unlike the carefully hand-stitched front drapery, I just top-stitched this into place on the machine. The hem nobody will notice, and the higher band of stitching I covered with a bias strip made from the leftover scraps of orange plaid silk to tie the two elements of the costume together. The front and side panels of the skirt are sewn between the waistband and the waistband lining, while the back is cartridge pleated to the finished edge, so it's as full as possible with minimal bulk. I later added a waist tape to the inside of the bodice because the back was a little shapeless. It doesn't really help, but it makes me feel better. Overall, I have some issues with this outfit. The bodice is definitely not the right size for me. It's comfortable enough to wear if a little restrictive, but I feel like the bustle shape would be more pronounced if the back was longer and the pleats started lower down. The next time I want to make a dress using a pattern from one of Frances Grimble's books, I will probably draft the simplest bodice from the start of the book and play around with reducing the chest from a larger size to see if I can get a better length and shoulder proportions for my shape. Having now actually read the start of the book, I'm pretty sure that is what I was supposed to do. Oh well.
But putting that aside, there's a lot of things about this outfit I really like. The colour combination is excellent, and I think the use of contrast and detail, while relatively simple by Victorian standards, is bold and striking. I got to put a lot of techniques into practice, some of them new to me, and I'm really happy with how they all turned out. Thank you for watching! If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe to keep the YouTube gods happy, follow me on Instagram, and in the description box there's a link to my Ko-fi if you'd like to make a one-off donation to support this channel and fund another six rounds of mock-ups before I tackle the next bustle dress. Dream big, and I'll see you next time.